The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, is often described as the most advanced international instrument ever created for exploring the universe. It isn't just a telescope, it's humanity's most powerful window into the unknown. Its mission reaches across some of the deepest questions in astronomy, to examine the planets of our solar neighborhood, to study worlds orbiting distant stars, to trace the immense web of galaxies, stars, and nebulae, and to reveal humanity's place in the grand structure of the cosmos. Unlike any observatory before it, JWST allows us to peer farther into both space and time, unlocking areas of the universe that had remained beyond our reach. Recently, this extraordinary instrument turned its gaze toward a world located about 120 light-years away. What it revealed has astonished scientists everywhere. Clear evidence of carbon-based molecules in the atmosphere of a planet that may be covered in oceans. This isn't just another faraway planet. Under the right conditions, it might be capable of supporting life. The discovery was groundbreaking, not only for what it showed, but for what it suggested about the possibilities that lie beyond Earth. So how was such a discovery made? And what does it mean for the ongoing search for life in the cosmos? Today, we'll explore this exoplanet breakthrough and the long journey that led us to this point. If you'd like to stay updated on discoveries in space science and beyond, make sure to subscribe to our channel, Waves Discovery, and turn on notifications so you won't miss future episodes. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope recently studied a fascinating planet known as K218b. This world is far from ordinary. It's a massive exoplanet, around 8.6 times the mass of Earth and about 2.6 times larger. Found in the constellation Leo, it orbits a cool red dwarf star called K218. Importantly, it lies in the star's habitable zone, the region where conditions could allow liquid water to exist. That fact alone made K218b an object of high interest. But JWST's latest data revealed something far more compelling. For the first time, scientists confirmed the presence of methane and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. On Earth, both gases are strongly linked to biological activity, though they can also arise from non-living processes. Their detection on K218b strengthens the idea that this world may have conditions favorable for life. Even more intriguing is the possibility that beneath its hydrogen-rich skies, this planet could host a vast ocean. The absence of ammonia in JWST's data further supports this hypothesis, since many hydrogen-rich planets tend to show it. But perhaps the most exciting, and controversial, finding was a tentative hint of dimethyl sulfide, or DMS. On Earth, this compound is produced almost entirely by microscopic marine life. If confirmed, it would represent one of the most important potential signs of life ever found beyond Earth. Scientists caution, however, that this signal remains uncertain. More data is needed before making such a claim. As one researcher explained, K218b's large size, more than twice Earth's diameter, complicates the picture. It may not be a rocky Earth-like planet at all, but something closer to Neptune, with extreme conditions in its ocean. Still, JWST has now provided the most detailed atmospheric model of any sub-Neptune world orbiting within a star's habitable zone. This achievement alone marks a turning point in exoplanet science. The technique it uses is nothing short of remarkable. As K218b passes in front of its star, some of the starlight filters through the planet's atmosphere before reaching us. That faint light carries chemical fingerprints, patterns and distortions that reveal what the atmosphere is made of. Juiced spectrographs break this filtered light into its component wavelengths, like a prism splitting sunlight into a rainbow. Within those rainbows, tiny dips and peaks mark the presence of specific gases. This is how astronomers confirmed methane and carbon dioxide on K218b, and why the faint signature of dimethyl sulfide, though still uncertain, has generated so much excitement. 
It is one of the most powerful techniques available to modern astronomy. With every transit observed, JWST gathers more data, sharpening our picture of these distant worlds. And soon, its mid-infrared instruments will take the analysis further, mapping not just the composition of K218b skies, but also the temperature and possible climate patterns across its surface. The ultimate goal is to find biosignatures, telltale signs that life may be influencing a planet's chemistry. Whether through gases, patterns of disequilibrium, or unexpected compounds, these clues could be the first whispers of biology beyond Earth. But JWST's impact stretches far beyond the study of exoplanets. One of its most profound discoveries has come from looking not at planets, but at galaxies formed when the universe was only 1.5 billion years old, barely 10% of its current age. In these young galaxies, JWST detected complex organic molecules, carbon-rich structures similar to those found in coal, oil, and even the pollution we see in modern cities. These molecules are known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs. On Earth, they arise from processes both natural and industrial, but their detection in such an early galaxy stunned astronomers. It means that within a relatively short span after the Big Bang, the universe was already building the complex chemistry that could one day support life. The galaxy that revealed these molecules, designated SP141847, was itself a surprise. Despite its youth, it had already grown into a system with a mass comparable to our Milky Way. It contained abundant carbon and oxygen, but distributed in unusual, uneven patterns. Why would these molecules clump in some areas but not in others? What does that tell us about how galaxies grow, mix, and evolve? These remain open questions, questions JWST is uniquely suited to explore. Taken together, these discoveries highlight a profound truth. JWST is not just answering old questions, it is forcing us to ask entirely new ones. Are planets like K218b rare outliers, or are ocean worlds common across the galaxy? Could life emerge under conditions utterly unlike Earth's, perhaps in high-pressure oceans wrapped in hydrogen atmospheres? And what about the early galaxies, if complex molecules appeared so quickly? Might life itself have had more time, and more opportunities, to arise elsewhere in the cosmos? The detection of methane, carbon dioxide, and possibly dimethyl sulfide on K218b is a powerful symbol of how far our science has advanced. A single generation ago, astronomers could barely confirm that exoplanets existed. Today, we are probing their atmospheres in exquisite detail, 120 light-years away. What was once science fiction is now observational reality. Of course, caution remains. None of these detections alone prove life exists there. The chemistry may turn out to be purely geological, or the conditions may be far too extreme for biology as we know it. But the point is not certainty, the point is progress. Each finding nudges us closer to answering one of humanity's oldest questions. Are we alone? In this sense, JWST is far more than a telescope. It is a time machine, letting us glimpse the infancy of galaxies. It is a chemistry lab, analyzing the invisible signatures of alien skies. It is a detective, piecing together the story of the cosmos photon by photon. And perhaps most importantly, it is a reminder of what humanity can achieve when we dare to look beyond our horizons. As its mission continues, JWST will keep challenging our assumptions, rewriting textbooks, and inspiring new generations of scientists, explorers, and dreamers. And perhaps, someday, it may provide the most profound discovery of all, the first undeniable evidence of life beyond.